Well, hello. I'm going to do something today that I never do is a first impressions video. So I'm going to share my first impressions of a pen. And don't expect me to do this again very often. So let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And if you'd like to comment on this pen, perhaps offer some suggestions or your own experience, I would welcome that in the comments down below. And perhaps you have some comments on first impressions. I, uh, I'll pick that up at the end of the video and feel free to leave a comment about that as well. So what you're looking at, I've got to look at the name, I'm sorry, because it, it's a really complicated name. This is a Stipula Etruria Prisma 88 Magma T-Flex pen. I've never owned a Stipula pen. I have tried two of their inks. Um, this is actually loaded with one of the inks. And then I also have, um, what is it, musk green, something like that. Swampy green color, anyway. So uh, this is saffron in the pen, which you'll be seeing in a moment. I, uh, I've been line judging every single home volleyball game all season. So that paid for this pen. And, that, and then some, actually, because... Um, my suggestion to you, if you're interested in a pen like this, shop around. Used market is good, although not for a pen like this because it just came out. Um, so are various retailers. Some are better than others. So let's take a look at the pen. So this is the Magma T Flex. And you can, I, I apologize for this. That's from teaching. <laughs> a little lab accident. Um, Anyway, the T-Flex has a interesting sort of a resin pattern. I like it. A uh, cup was it last year? They had a rainbow version. I I liked the concept, but then the barrel was totally clear, and that sort of killed it for me. And I actually like that there's a little bit of texturing inside. Uh, this has, you know, it's a limited edition, which is interesting, and metal workings for the piston. And by the way. One thing that really threw me off, because at first I thought it was broken, this pen turns backward, which a little bit of research on the piston turning knob, apparently that's a stipula thing. Also, you don't ever see any gap here as it screws or unscrews, so that's neat too. Uh, you can see the leaf pattern both on the clip and on the, the trim ring. Uh, and you'll notice it's it's sort of a matte gold finish. I think that's kind of nice. One of the reviewers I was looking at, let's see, Rachel De La Fuente um, complained a bit that uh, the previous, one of the previous versions, I don't remember which, didn't like the mismatch between the matte gold nib and then the shiny bits on the pen itself. So this is the nib. It's a titanium nib, of course, plated in gold. T-Flex, standing for titanium. The feed, honest to God, looks like the exact same feed I'd find in any of my Chinese pens. I like this finial. I like this finial. Just kind of an attractive look. That's something I see on the Platinum um, 3776 I like also. So where, where's this coming from? Etruria is a region of Tuscany. Um, and uh, there were only 193 of this particular pen made, although the Etruria is a regular model that Stipula has. Why 193? Well, that seemed pretty random, but apparently that's the number of Florentine hands that go from the base to the top of Duomo, which is the Basilica di Santa Maria del Fiore in Florence, which is the birthplace of the Renaissance. Science guy like me like, appreciates that. And it was built from uh, 1296 to 1436. And uh, apparently the roof was a bit of a challenge. But anyway, I want to show you how it writes and then I'll throw in a few more comments about this pen. Since this is a first impressions video, I'm going to use Rhodia dot paper instead of my review notebook. And I don't know exactly what I'm going to write yet, but we should probably write the name of the pen. And we should probably get a little bit closer. OK, 
Can you tell that this is a very wet writer? So Stipula Truria Prisma 88. And we're off the screen. The finish is called Magma, and the nib is a T-Flex, short for Titanium Flex. Uh, I have always heard that Titanium nibs can be sprung quite easily. I have no desire to spring mine. I'm going to back off the zoom just a teensy bit. Uh, so some of you might be saying, you're not pushing it to its limits. Well, too bad. So I tried to do some really narrow and uh, full flex as much as I dare. This is just the weight of the pen. This is the full thing. So overall, I'm thinking this is writing very well. So I'll tell you what, and by the way, everywhere the ink is pooled, let's see if you can see it when I do this, maybe. Still not dry yet, but I can't, there you go, you saw a little bit of the shine there. What did I do to do that? There we go. So you can see that's just pooling on the paper. This actually bled through my Tomoe River paper. I was using it to write a letter last night. Now the ink is Stipula, and I've seen several spellings for this and I'm no longer sure which one's the right one. Because I've seen it spelled with two F's, I've seen it spelled this way, and then there's the way I would have spelled saffron, so who knows. Uh, it's an attractive ink no matter how you spell it, although it doesn't always play well in all pens. And I am somewhat wondering if that's the problem with this pen. Because I'll tell you what was happening. I, I was writing along. I got this pen on Monday. I'm filming this on Wednesday. Yes, I'm a little late. Um got on Monday, worked at school till about 8 p.m. because I'm still in working on this reorganizing project. Then uh, about 8 p.m. I finally went home, finally got a chance to open this pen up and try it, and wouldn't you know it, wrote beautifully. Next day, uh, again worked at school till late, so I haven't had a whole lot of quality time with this pen yet, and started writing again and it quit suddenly so you know sometimes that happens you know i shook it down i don't like the whole where you go with the nib on the paper because that that's just a scary way to handle it um started writing again quit again so i saturated the feed by turning the piston turning knob and that helped for a while and then it quit writing again now i'll admit the truth I'm not one who cleans out a pen when he first gets it. Unless it's a vintage pen, you know, you don't necessarily know with them where they've been. So, I have not had long today, but when I got home from school today, I got home somewhat earlier today just because I, uh, well, I wanted to film this and I have some schoolwork to do that's just a lot easier to do sitting at home. So I'm going to do it sitting at home tonight. But anyway, I decided to clean this pen out, work with the... Uh, I, I have, of course, some cleaner that you use in a pen. Uh, uh, it's homemade. It has ammonia in it and uh, dish soap and, of course, mostly water. Just in case there's some machining oils. Now, so far writing with it, which hasn't been long, but it's been longer than this, I haven't had any trouble. Uh, prior to this, I was correcting physics tests with this pen, which... Don't do that because it was bleeding through the cheap school paper. But anyway, I uh, it was skipping and hard starting, and I ended up finishing the tests with a different pen. So it remains to be seen if washing it out and refilling it helped or not. Now, uh, I'll do a little more writing with it in a minute, but I just wanted to point out a couple of remarks from... Um, actually, Rachel De La Fuente is my main... Per, uh, person I got my information from because she apparently has more experience with this pen than I do um, but one of the things she remarked on was the visibility of the glue and some of the imperfections in the 
resin. Sorry if that's gross. With my cut, that was uh, left a lot of blood all over the place yesterday morning. And then it wouldn't stop bleeding, so that was fun too. Uh, but anyway, uh, she if you've been looking, I was originally going to purchase this from Goulet Pens. Uh, because it almost exactly matched the amount of money I was going to that I made doing line judging, uh, Goulet Pens keeps pushing off the issue date. So I just did a search and see who else was selling it, and I found a retailer, um, and so I purchased it from that retailer. Now I may be sorry, I don't know, but you know I I will put the citation down below in the video description. But Rachel De La Fuente reports a delay at Goulet Pens because they sent their pens back to Stipula. Uh, they're trying to get new nibs crafted and re-tipped. And they're waiting for the person who does the gold plating to return from vacation. Because it keeps getting pushed off month after month after month, the arrival of these pens. Why? I don't know. Now, I will complement the alignment. Not perfect, but the alignment between the piston turning knob and the body. Between the cap and body, not so much. And that's one of the things she remarked on. I will also say, it's really one of those pens I don't think is worth the price. But because I uh, bought it, uh, I'll just tell you, in Malaysia, I don't have the name of the retailer written down here, but it's a retailer in Malaysia. I... Uh, it was a bit lower cost at this retailer. Some of their pens are, some of their pens are definitely not. But this one was one of the lower cost ones. Uh, but anyway, I'm uh, I'm content with it for the price I paid. I think if I'd gotten this pen from Goulet Pens, I honestly would not have been content. Not a, not a remark against Goulet Pens at all. Just the price that's being offered there, uh, not so much. So I'm going to have to purchase something from them to make up for this, although not quite that dollar amount. If you're interested, I have pen number 84 of 193. Let's just see a little bit more writing. I'm going to zoom out just a tiny bit, and I'm going to do go all Pierre Gustafson on. Okay, good. The squirrel's not down here, so he can't scamper onto the screen suddenly. I was doing some of this at, at when I when I got home and finally decided to correct it because it quit writing. And then I would saturate the feed by turning the piston turning knob and then it would quit writing again. And then I'd hold it up to the light, you know, nib down, and I'd just watch the ink slowly pour into the nib slit. But... Would you say that that's doing pretty well now? So, uh, wait until I do the real review. Oh, there we go. That's what I was experiencing earlier. Yeah, and I'm looking at the nib, nib slit. And I don't think you can see it. Yeah, you can't see it. But no ink in it. But it is coming down pretty fast. There we go. And it's down. And it's rating again. So I don't know if that's a trait of stipula nibs. I don't know if that's a trait of this cheap feed that's in it. Uh, it's a pretty universal feed, so it's probably unfair for me to be calling it a cheap feed. And there we're starved again. So that is less than impressive. But I have to say the rate at which it's coming down the nib is much better now after the cleaning I did. Because it is almost to the bottom of the nib again. And probably if I were to shake the pen, it would get there right now. Hmm. So... Wait until I do the real review, and then we'll decide if uh, I'm sorry about buying this pen. While I'm on the subject of the pen, it does arrive in this, uh, let's pull back. 
It arri- Yes, those are my show notes. It does arrive as a nice uh, red thingy around it. I have one of the pieces of literature is upstairs, but it's just my warranty. Uh, stipula cloth covered box. A very nice cloth cover, actually. I like it. A magnetic closure. You can see the magnet there. Open it. The pen was inside this sack and sat here. There's a lot of bubble wrap around it. Keep it fancy. Pull this out. And underneath, there was a the warranty book and then there was this instructions for use which uh is fairly generic it has all their different types of pens plus uh the story of stipula if you're into that kind of thing so a little bit of disappointment in this nib uh definitely makes me not eager to buy another stipula uh, I am tempted, well, I am going to fill out the warranty card, and then we'll see. I may contact Stipula down the road if uh, this nib thing doesn't write itself. I uh, did try, like I said, cleaning it. I have not removed the nib. I'm very hesitant to do so. I, I may do so in the future, but I don't want to do anything to void the warranty. So I think I'll just let it ride as it is, and... Uh, Contact Stipula if it continues to be a problem. On the other hand, a lot of continuous flow. There are pens that can't keep up with that. Uh, on the other hand, a lot of my pens can keep up with it because I don't like it if I'm writing a page and I have to stop while writing the page and wait for ink to d get delivered to the nib. That makes the pen useless to me because I do a lot of writing like pages at a time and even with a pen like this this isn't meant to be a daily writer this was legitimately meant to be a really fun nice pen uh, if i have to wait for it though not good so that's my first impressions you very rarely get to see me do first impressions because sometimes pens arrive a little quirky and i have to do some cleaning or some other things to them to get them working um i at about $200. At the price point I paid for this pen, I shouldn't have to do that. Uh, at the price point that it's being marketed for in the United States, I definitely better not need to do that. Um, so, a little less than thrilled there. Not the best first impression of Stipula, but on the other hand, it writes beautifully until it doesn't. So, take that for what it's worth. Uh, let me know what you think. Is, is it worth doing uh, first impressions videos ever again? I uh, don't always have my full information or research when I do these. And I don't have my full experience because uh, that's why it is. I'm not calling this a review. It's I know nothing about this pen and how it acts. Uh, it could be as simple as, I know it's a stipula pen, but maybe it hates this particular ink. A lot of my pens do. A lot of my pens are very skippy with this ink. So maybe what I need to do is try it with a different ink. So I'll keep you updated uh, down the road and uh, look for a review on it sometime. Uh, I like to do at least two full fills on a pen, possibly more, before I review it. Sometimes I've even owned them for a couple of years before I review them. So we'll see. But in the meantime... If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old, and at all price points, by the way, this doesn't make it into my top most expensive pens, thanks to finding a different retailer, um, please feel free to leave a comment down. No, I'm sorry, I, I just totally messed up my little script. The one memorized part of my videos and I, boo, it's gone. Uh, <laughs> Where was I? If videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And if you would like to talk about your experience with Stipula, your impressions of this pen, maybe some suggestions for getting the nib to write, uh, or your experience with uh, titanium nibs, please feel free to leave a comment down below and perhaps you'd like to comment on whether first impressions are worth doing ever again. So. Uh, it's a busy week, which is why I ended up doing a first impressions video, because I just don't have time to pull together all the research. And uh, yeah, I want to thank you for watching. 
We'll see you later. Bye-bye.